Alright, today on RTOD we're looking at the Game Shark for the Nintendo 64. This is one of my favorite Game Sharks because this time in history when this came out, we started to have more internet in the homes. More people were having computers and access to the World Wide Web. So this Game Shark had a parallel port in the back. So I could hook it up to my computer while my N64 was running and upload and download codes. Uh, there were some other really neat things at the time where you could take your uh, N64 memory card, hook that up to your PC via your COM port. Uh, it was just a really, really interesting time to, to be a, a console gamer. Not only did this Game Shark help you beat games and do the typical stuff that a cheating device would do for you, but because the Nintendo 64 had a physical region lock, meaning that this cutout on the tab determined if it was a Japanese game or a North American game, you could play your Japanese games in your North American console because the Game Shark didn't care. It just plugged right in and there was a really long cutout on the bottom, so it didn't care what region you were in. Um, side note, I have a video where I show you how to 3D print a bracket inside your Nintendo 64 to make this region free without actually cutting the plastics. I don't, I don't like doing that. If we don't have to damage original equipment, let's not do it. But in today's video, we're not just going to show you the Game Shark. Uh, instead, we're going to watch the Game Shark How to Hack Like a Pro VHS. I got this. This is my original copy when I got my Game Shark. Oh, when it first came out, you know, decades ago, right? <clears throat> I haven't watched this video since it was new. And uh, tonight we're going to roll out the CRT and we're going to check it out. So let's even see if it's going to play and see what happens. Got the VCR on. All right, and play. So this is really cool because in the video it takes place in Scranton, Pennsylvania. I grew up on the other side of the state, so I thought that was pretty neat. So obviously this guy has everything, right? When they come to take your computer away, make sure you carry on like a crazed, bloodthirsty maniac. Hey, what are you guys doing? Oh no! Your hacking days are over. Because when they See, should have burned the hard drive. Use it to steal all the secrets of the gaming industry. There's nothing here. What? I don't know what to tell you. You and your shirt. Yeah, looking at like that modem card, like trying to find something. Boat to China. See, look at that. You can hook that up and use your you know, shark wire. It's, that could be a whole other video. Shark wire with something else. Look at that. And this was really cool. It, it wasn't really hacking, like let's be honest. Welcomes you to the mind -blowing world of video game but it made you think you were hacking. Game Shark Pro. Game Shark Pro, which is more technologically advanced than any other game enhanced yeah, because he's today, British, it, it's more believable that he knows he's talking about. Levels. It's jump-packed with great new features. Let's take a look. The Game Shark Pro is loaded with hundreds of codes for more than 100 Nintendo 64 titles. So you're sure that all the big... We're going to pause it real here just because... I remember watching this in my bedroom, in my childhood bedroom. I had... Um, Oh man, it must have been like a, a JVC or Panasonic, you know, a little 13-inch CRT with a, with a VHS built into it. And I would watch this over and over, and then I'd go back to, you know, my N64, and I'd switch from the VHS uh, over to my AV, and then try to do what they did in the video. It would have been better if I had two TVs, but I'm getting a lot of nostalgia watching this. Oh, come on, play. Game Shark Pro go. contains enough memory to hold hundreds more Game Shark codes. And the one new feature that makes the Game Shark Pro the ultimate video game enhancer is its built in code ultimate generator. Enhancer. Code generator gives you the power to produce your own jaw dropping, game winning Game Shark codes. So why wait for cool new codes? See, this, this was cool yourself? because at that time, pri previous to the N64, you had to have a code book or you had to know somebody or maybe uh, you know, you, you'd find it in a magazine, like a gaming magazine, where you'd find these codes. But what this would allow you to do is to learn. You'd actually look at different parameters for the game. And I, I think I remember it shows you in here. Um, that was really cool because if you had a brand new game, 
maybe there weren't game magazines that had codes out for it yet. So you could just play it, change the parameter, maybe you wanted lives or something, or, or you know, unlimited ammunition. You can go in and change that. But also, at this time, the, the internet was getting better, so you can go on the forums or message boards and find codes for games, so you can upload yours. So it's kind of a race to see who can, you know, get the newest game, figure out what codes were for it, and then upload them. In this video, you'll discover how the GameShark Pro will revolutionize your gameplay, arming you with the power to load the most devastating codes available, and even showing you how to take things a stage further and create your own mm -hmm. habit wreaking codes of destruction. The GameShark Pro is preloaded with a huge range of powerful GameShark codes, and using them couldn't be easier. From the hundreds of Nintendo 64 titles available on the GameShark Pro, select the game you've loaded from the game selection menu. Then choose the GUI is really you great. It's really easy to navigate. To play it. Sometimes certain games won't work with the GameShark Pro until a special key code is activated. Now here's a list of Nintendo 64 games that require... I remember this. So if you wanted to play one of these games, you'd have to load up that key code and it would make it think I'm not really sure how it worked on the back end but you had to load that up before work those codes would work. Pro. GameShark Pro comes preloaded with key codes for all of these games and these key codes must be activated before the use of the GameShark Pro with one of these titles. However since these games will not work with the GameShark Pro until the key code has been activated you must first insert another game cartridge into the GameShark yeah, Pro. Yes, so you, you had to put the game in, the another game in, so we would think code. it was that, and then you would turn on the game code, and then you'd swap it out. Because you can so actually, to an extent, you know, not hot swap, but, you know, to work with plug the right game Pro. in, unplug This will be your setup cartridge. Now we shall use GoldenEye. Just like you said. Since we want to play Zelda 64, go to the key codes menu and select the Zelda 64 key code by pushing the analog Ooh. stick up or down to highlight the desired code, and pressing the A button to select it. Because we have the Zelda 64 cartridge, we can select yes at the warning screen and press the A button. Once the key code is activated, turn off your Nintendo 64 system. Remove the GoldenEye setup cartridge and insert the game that required the key code, then turn the system on again. The GameShark Pro's main menu will appear and you can select your codes or start the game. If you don't have the key code game available, do not select yes at the warning screen. If you do select yes, then the next time you use the GameShark Pro, the game that you've activated the key code for must be inserted. Be warned, the GameShark Pro will not function until the game is inserted into it. This always scared me, I never released, did it, but I don't think it would actually work it codes. or anything. You probably just let it sit for 30 minutes. To find out more information about them. You can also read more about key codes in the Using Key Code section of the GameShark Pro instruction manual. GameShark Pro's memory card manager allows you to view the contents of any Nintendo 64 memory card up to 123 pages in size. Follow the simple on-screen instructions to load, save, and copy game save between your memory cards. This was really, really cool. Because if you had a friend you wanted to copy save games across, maybe I had something I wanted to share with you, you can easily do it with the GameShark. Um, you know, it wasn't like the PlayStation where you had, you know, as soon as you boot it up without a game in, you go to the PlayStation menu and you can change it around. Uh, it didn't have that on the N64. The N64 didn't have its own operating system. So this was really, really important if you wanted to either trade save games or what I did. I would, you know, you have my main memory card, but then I'd copy them over to a second memory card just in case it got corrupted, lost, uh, whatever. It makes it possible to copy game saves from the EEPROM of your game cartridges onto standard memory cards. You can even trade these saves with friends using Interact's N64 Dex Drive. Dex Drive, that's what I was thinking. So I had the one for the N64, I wanted the one for the PlayStation, but you know, it came with this program, you'd hook it up to the COM port for your computer, and then you can pull your save drives, your save, your save games off of it, upload it, uh, download other people's save drives. This was really, really cool back in the day. And, you know, having the Dex Drive and having the GameShark Pro... Um, you know, I, I, I thought I was a little, <laughs> I thought I was great, man. Um, I thought, I thought it was hacking. It really wasn't, but <laughs> I thought it was. And it was, it was a really, really cool time to, to be a young gamer. The GameShark Pro has a built-in image viewer that allows you to see graphics stored in the system memory the last time the freeze button of your GameShark Pro was pressed. So you can view graphics that would not normally be viewed during a game. 
Alpha. So cool. So cool. Every keen game player is aware of the increasing levels of sophistication arriving with each new game that hits the shelves. Games are becoming increasingly more challenging, not only to novice players, but to hardcore gamers too. And no matter how we grade ourselves in terms of game playing dominance, sometimes we need help. And to meet this need, many game publishers now embed special effects into their games that allow you to bend the rules. You commonly find special moves, level skips and so on which are unleashed with the use of codes or fancy controller moves. GameShark Pro redefines the rules, letting you set the agenda. Now get ready, because we're going to teach you how to play and hack games like a pro using this the GameShark Pro. This is important. Please understand that hacking your own GameShark codes may be a little difficult at first. After you study this video and actually try to find codes on your own a few times, you'll start to grasp some concepts of video game coding and the hexadecimal system used when hacking for GameShark codes. How does the GameShark Pro tilt the odds this. in your favour? Well, it starts with the codes. The GameShark code is a special routine that affects the way a game actually works. You can select any number of powerful codes to arm you with the ability to blast your games wide open. This means you can play a game with infinite life or health, infinite ammo, extra vehicles, extra weapons and so on. Whether you want to simply load in codes to enable you to complete a particular level, then disable them and go it alone, or if you want to really cheat by playing an entire game using the codes, the choice is yours. Before we look at how GameShark codes work, you'll first need to understand a little of how the actual engine of the game functions. Every game, whether it be a fighting, racing, adventure or shoot 'em up title, has a built-in table of events that holds the information about gameplay variables. This area might contain values for the current level, energy status, number of lives and so on. During gameplay, if for instance a life is lost, then the value at a particular memory location is reduced to reflect the new lower life value. Likewise, if the game player moves on to the next level, then a different value within memory will be increased accordingly. This, this was really interesting to me. and. You know, it kind of got me as a as a young guy thinking about programming, and you know how everything works in the game. So, like you said, talking about different variables. So, if you had nine lives, you know, you would take like a snapshot beforehand, so it'd see all the all the code that was loading it in in memory. You'd lose a life, and then you'd see well, what changed? What parameter changed? And, you know, it might be ten, might be three, or whatever it is. And then you would keep keep doing that thing, keep reducing your lives, or or if it was a, a shoot 'em up, maybe you'd keep you know firing, right? And you'd slowly whittle it down until you see what parameter changed until there was one left, and you know that one that kept changing was you know lives, ammo, or, or whatnot. Affect the way a game's engine works. You have the ability to control these values by preventing the game engine from changing them in the normal way. GameShark Pro has the ability yeah, to prevent you know the values you in memory from being you want. by the game, and it actually takes control of these locations by forcing alternative values into them. This is done by the use of GameShark codes. A GameShark code is made up of two parts. The first part is quite simply the address of the memory location that we wish to take control of. This might be the location that controls lives, for instance. The second part of the code is the alternative value that we wish to place there. For instance, if this location normally contains only two lives, then a GameShark code for extra lives might read like this, where the nine equals nine lives. If you simply can't wait for codes for the newest blockbuster game, then GameShark Pro's built-in code finder is just for you. GameShark Pro has a powerful code generator system which allows you to find and create your own GameShark code. Operation of this feature is quite simple, and you can soon be producing GameShark codes equal to those already available. One important point here is that to use the code generator feature, your Nintendo 64 must be fitted with a 4 meg RAM expander. Once your console is equipped with the RAM expander, you'll I remember some people had the GameShark and not the RAM inspector. I don't think it advertised that. It might have. GameShark Pro start the game as you would normally, without any codes enabled. Look for any element you would like to change, for example, number of bullets, lives, or money. So in this case, we want to make Duke's pistol bullets unlimited. To go about finding this code, press GameShark's freeze button, which takes you into the in-game menu. Select code generator option. From within this menu screen, select known value search. From the next menu, select equal to. Here, we will enter the value 48, as this represents the number of bullets Duke has. GameShark tells us there are over 10,000 possibilities. Yes, yeah, so now we're narrowing it down, so right? So every, game, every variable that has 48, you need to change fire a couple bullets. rounds. So to do this, we fire once. Yep. Okay, so we now have 47 bullets. So you Press go back in. Again. 
the known value search menu will appear. Select equal to and enter the new value 47. Now we have only two possibilities. So, easy, right? So we select view search results. The codes we have found are displayed on the left of the screen. To discover which of these codes controls Duke's bullets, go. we need to try them out. So we select one of the codes. Two's manageable, right? Then return Might to the do game again if it was like 12. And fire some bullets. There you go. See, it's staying at 47. The code that doesn't allow our number of bullets to be reduced is the correct code. So now throughout this level, Duke's pistol bullets will remain at 47. See, that was so cool. Like, if you did that for the first time, it was so cool. Now we've found our code, we need to save it. To do this, switch your Nintendo console off, then on again. This takes you back into the GameShark Pro main menu. Here we're going to select Cheat Codes. Select New Game, then Edit Name. Enter the name of the game. Then select you had to do the that with the stick because there was no keyboard. Select New Code. Enter a name for the code. Then edit the code. The code you have found appears at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Press C right to highlight the code, then press A to select it. Your code will now appear in the edit box. So I, nev I nev can never say, remember C right and to your code pick is now it, right? So I have a little notebook of you know, what buttons to press if you wanted to do, and of course I'd write down all the codes too. In some cases, you may not know the value you're looking for. For example, an energy bar shows no number. To demonstrate how you would go about finding an unknown value of this type, we will use Midway's Mortal Kombat Trilogy, where we'll look for Player One's health. From within the Code Generator menu, select Unknown Value Search. Select Start. This initiates GameShark Search. It's probably like 20, Here, we return things, to the right? game and lose some of Player One's health. Once we've done this, we press the Freeze button and select Less Than Last. It's all coming back, man. It's all coming back. There are over a million possibilities, so we need to reduce this number to ideally around 20 possibilities. Because it's also looking at so everything else that has changed since last health. time. So, player position, Repeat you know, time... Repeat the process time. as many times as necessary to obtain a manageable number of possibilities. In finding this code, we repeated this process eight times until we had reduced the number of possibilities down to 26. Jeez. Then by process of elimination, we deduce which is the code that affects player one's health. Notice how player one's health bar doesn't go down. So you see, this is a real manual process. It wasn't something that was, in the way shown was easy. Previously. You actually had to learn and trial by error. Um, it was hands-on so and cerebral. It was a lot of fun. And create your own simple codes. Using the same methods, you can go on to discover extra characters, lives, and even create new game scenarios. We offer several valid sources of the newest and oldest codes. We have a weekly updated 900 line, 1-900-773-SHARK. There's a free access website, www.gameshark.com, and we publish a bi-monthly newsletter called Dangerous Waters. We also supply codes for your favourite video game magazines, like Game Informer, EGM, Expert Gamer, and Tips and Tricks. I had Game Informer Finally, and EGM, I love those magazines. Two official GameShark code books that sell in bookstores and game retailers nationwide. Oh, man. Is there more? No, it's just the credit. Like Memory cards. Tiny, inconspicuous, small. With today's video games taking up more and more space on a memory card, gamers have less and less space to store all of those favorite game saves. Not to mention the amount of space you lose with the mountain of memory cards you have accumulated. And they're very Why expensive, choose which too. saves to keep and which to delete, when the Dex Drive gives you the ability to store yep. all of your game saves on the biggest memory card created, your PC. Use the Dex Drive to email your best game saves to friends around the world, or download new game saves from the Dex Drive website. All of this power is available to you so cool. with the use so of only one memory card. The Dex Drive is available for the Sony PlayStation. This is something that, you know, younger people today just won't get. The Dex Drive they won't understand that. Mountains. Oh, look how I had that controller controlled. 
I had, but the problem is it would wear, right? So like the center and the side, it would just wear off over use and it turned white because of white plastic under it. match the huge hit Zelda Ocarina of Time? Oh, that's just wonderful. You know, Janice, we've got a gold memory card to match. I didn't have a memory card, but I had the controller. This is just perfect for anyone who really wants to And then I remember, like, because it would wear, then it would flake, right? So I had gold flake chips all over the place. You're going to stop track. It was so cheap. It was so cheap. edition item, so you better get them while they're around. I don't have it anymore. It's gone. The V3 FX racing wheel coming soon for use with the Sony PlayStation and Nintendo 64. I don't know if I had this racing wheel. I had a racing wheel. And don't forget that you can also... Actually, you can't do any of that with the V3FX, and we strongly could. recommend that you don't. But what you can do with the V3FX is experience all the hottest racing games with total control and ultimate comfort. Two powerful motors provide vibration feedback, letting you feel every jolt, turn, and impact. So wheels like that were great, but I used to play, I, I had a futon in, in the family room where we had my N64, and, you know, the bottom of that wheel would sit under your legs, right? And it just never worked out on the futon, because the wheel's like right up here, in your chest wasn't a wasn't an enjoyable experience. What else do we have? I remember these commercials at the end. I just don't remember how many there were. I said I haven't watched this in years, years, probably twenty years. What more? This must be the end. This must be the end. Yeah, they're saying Thin Ice Media. Look them up. See if they're still around. I don't know. Maybe they are. Google them. Yeah, so here we go. All these games are owned by other people, and they're just showing them. Don't sue us. And that's it. Oh, man. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Man, I remember watching this. Um, and it's pretty, you know, it's a 15-minute video, right? So it's pretty easy to uh, to digest as a kid, and you know, I always kept it at the part where they'd show the code, so I can always refresh myself. Um, yeah, and I was—I always remember I had a, a little notebook next to my N64, and I'd write down all the shortcuts, all the buttons you had to do, like write C to to load the last code in, um, and then I also manually wrote the codes down too, because there wasn't like there's memory in here, right? But if I if I remember correctly, it just really works with capacitors, right? So there's volatile RAM. When you turn your system off and on, you need to do that quickly, right? Because the codes are stored in volatile RAM and they're saved there long enough just because of the capacitor. And, you know, now that these things are older, sometimes it takes two or three times to actually have the Game Shark work, right? So you'd plug it in, turn the N64 on, and nothing would come on, right? There's, a, there's an LED here, and you'd have to do it a couple times to kind of jolt power through. Um, Man, maybe I'll have to take it apart one day and, and see if there's anything we can do to, to help that. I, I don't know. <laughs> in, in all honesty, um, I really don't use the Game Shark too much anymore. Um, although I might. Maybe we'll after this. Hey, if you like this video and, and you want to see us actually do some of the, the hacking with this Game Shark, where we try to play around with some of the parameters in a game, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Did you have a Game Shark growing up? Did you have. The, the version 3 with the parallel port, did you use it? Um, what did you think about Game Sharks? Was it, was it cheating? Was it just a, a game enhancer, like it was told? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Hey, if you like this stuff, um, you know, like, subscribe, tell your friends. We'll catch you next time.